when I was asked to do this talk, uh, I thought, what do I talk about? What do I want you, the audience, to leave here with? And I landed on hope. I want you to leave with hope. And it sounds a bit trite, that, but hope's important. It's, it's part of our lives. You know, we, we hope that we won't hit traffic on the way home. We hope that our relatives will get better. We hope that our kids will grow up to be good people. I hope that I won't balls this talk up. Um, and whenever we switch on our radio or our TVs or we scroll through our socials, we're bombarded with horror stories. We're told there's a, a high probability that we'll die if we leave the house, whether it's by a natural disaster, a hate crime, or worst of all, someone might disagree with us on the internet. Um, and there's no hope. It's all a bit nihilistic. You know, what, what message do we want to send to our kids, to our young people? Um, see, when we're growing up, we, do we need to be bombarded with negativity? We have enough to worry about, don't we? we? We worry about all sorts of things when we're growing up. We worry about some things that are tragic, some things that are trivial, some things that are quite profound. You know, I, I used to worry about what will I be when I grow up? but I wanted to be a wizard. Um, and funnily enough, my son told me that he wanted to be a dragon, so it's nice to know that the, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, what car will I drive? People might say Ferrari or a Bentley, but I wanted to drive a Ford Scorpio um, because it sounded like Scorpion, and Scorpions are cool, right? I used to worry about other things as well. I used to worry about, you know, will I always be fat? Will I always be ugly? Will I ever be any good at rugby? Will I ever fit in? Will I ever find my place in the world? See, as a kid, I used to, I used to look like this. Um, a chubbier, buck-toothed, much more ginger kid. And I loved reading. I loved learning, I loved fantasy stuff, you know, dragons and magic, and that made me feel like a bit of a nerd. I loved history, I loved generals and kings and wars, but that made me feel like a bit of a geek. I liked boys too, and that made me feel like a, a freak, a weirdo. What was wrong with me? Was, was everybody thinking this and we weren't talking about it, or, or was there something wrong with me? See. I grew up in a town where nobody was gay, apparently. Gay people were like Elton John and George Michael, um, and I was definitely not like them. I grew up in a, in a world where gay was a negative. Don't do that, it's gay. Being gay was either the butt of a joke or it was a cause for pity, and someone's gayness was offensive. It wasn't a badge of pride. Unfortunately, that world does still exist. And I grew up regularly hearing, don't be gay. So I tried my hardest not to be. I tried to bury it, tried to hide it, ignore it. Um, I blamed my dad for it. See, he was never around and I always thought, if he'd have been around then, maybe I wouldn't have been gay. And then I started to think, maybe he knew that I was gay and that's why he left in the first place. I wanted so much to find a place to fit in. And I did, I found one by accident. I was playing out on the street one day and a, a blue minibus pulled up outside and a guy wound the window down and he said, come on, get in. Shit, I thought, this is the stranger my mum's been going on about. So I ran in the house and I said, she said, oh, it's, it's all right. I ended up getting in and uh, I went off. It turned out it was the local rugby coach and He'd seen me in the school playground, thought, he's a big lad, and he'd surreptitiously recruited me via my mum. So I went off to my first rugby session. I loved it. The premise was catch the ball and run. I couldn't do either. <laughs> um, but I stuck with it and I got better at it. And puberty was good to me. You know, I needn't worry too much about being fat and ugly because... By the time I was 17, I was six foot four and I had a beard that covered half of my face. 
Now, I'd like to tell you that at that point, I came to terms with being gay, I accepted who I was, I came out, and everything was fine. Uh, but that's not what happened. That's not what happened for a long time. See, I was, I was scared of letting people down. I was scared of being a disappointment. There were no gay rugby players. There were no, I thought there were no gay people like me. But wait a minute, there's no gay people like me, so I can't be gay. Goodbye worry, hello denial. Over the years, I'd be a bouncer, a builder, I worked as a postie, I worked in a factory, absolutely not gay. Um, I had a girlfriend at 19 and I was a dad at 20. I was in deep denial there. Um, I thought that I wasn't gay anymore, or that if I was, it must be on its way out. And from the outside, I had it all. I had a girlfriend, family, house, promising rugby career. But on the inside, there was a constant battle going on in my head. Who I thought I was supposed to be versus who I actually was. And as I got into a day-to-day -day routine, I became more trapped and scared. Trapped in a life that I should be happy with. Scared that a part of me that I tried to bury down so deep would be uncovered. And when the inside of your head is a battlefield, it's only a matter of time before it spills onto the outside. So I worked more, I trained more, I went out more, I drank. I did anything not to have to spend time in my own head. I wasn't a good father, I wasn't a good boyfriend, I wasn't a good person. But what were my options? Tell people that I was gay? I couldn't admit it to myself. So how could I tell another person? Talk to someone about it. Talk to someone about what? I, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't want to know what was going on. I couldn't live with it, and I couldn't carry on as things were, that's for sure. So I was, I didn't like myself. I was riddled with self-loathing. I didn't like the person who, who looked, back at the, uh, looked back at me in the mirror. So I came to the conclusion that I would take my own life. People would be better off without me. People wouldn't have to put with my shit. I wouldn't have to put with my shit. But I remember seeing my little girl and she was so small and I was so big. And she needed me, how could I leave her? I didn't want her to feel like I felt, that dad didn't love her, that something was her fault. So I buried my thoughts and my feelings and I resounded to be better. Now, I buried them so deep that I got married and had another kid. And people will probably ask you, well, why would you get married if you thought you might be gay? And the only answer I can give to that is, I didn't want to be gay. Um, I, a part of me that, I willed it and hoped and prayed that it would change, but it's a part of me that can't change. And it's something that, you know, I'll always have to live with and that I'll always be sorry for. By 24, we were married, had two kids, two dogs, rebuilt an house from the inside out. And rugby was going pretty well too. I'd played in a couple of championship grand finals and I'd become captain of my hometown club, which as you can see, I was pretty chuffed about. Um, and that's not a bad achievement for a fat kid who, as one fan once eloquently put it, couldn't run through a saloon door. I met some amazing people, friends for life, and I also met some fantastically ridiculous characters as well. Rugby league is full of them. My head and my hands were full for a while, but as things settled down, the same old battle came back. Who do you think you should be versus who you really are? Ding, ding, round two. I didn't do well the first time and I did even worse the second time. I felt like there was a, a huge hole in my soul and I tried to fill it. I tried to fill it with work, with training, with booze, with drugs. It didn't work. Maybe this time I'd actually have the balls to address it, to talk about it, to think about it. 
Um, and again, I thought about suicide. A long drive, a secluded spot, a hose pipe. But then, my family would never know why I'd done what I'd done. They'd think it was their fault. They'd think that they could have done something. It was, it was nobody's fault. The only thing they'd done wrong was put up with my shit. And I remember seeing my kids' faces and, you know, thinking, how, how could I think about leaving them? Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that my kids saved me from myself. I got into a nasty cycle of going out, getting into a state, beating myself up, feeling guilty. Round and round it went. A not-so-merry-go-round of depression and suicidal thoughts. Eventually it came to a head and my marriage came to an end. And with that came some time, some reflection, some realisation, and eventually acceptance. Now, it was hard to think about it. It was even harder to say it out loud. The words had literally stick in my throat. I'm but having it all sorted out in my own head was liberating and joyful and devastating and terrifying all at the same time. And now that I knew, other people needed to know too. And the first person I told would be my wife. And that was the hardest conversation I've ever had to have. Next, I'd tell my mum. And I wanted my mum to ask if I was okay. I wanted her to ask how I was feeling, ask what she could do to help. I wanted to tell her that she loved me, to hug me, to tell her she was proud of me, but she didn't. She said, you're six foot four, how can you be gay? Which sounds ridiculous now, but, you know, funnily enough, for the longest time I'd thought that myself. She told me she was disappointed and we didn't speak for five years. I was worried that we'd never speak again. My sister was brilliant, but I started to falter at this point. Maybe I'd done the wrong, wrong thing. And then a couple of rugby lads asked me, they said, Are some of these rumours about you being gay true? And I thought, what do I do? Do I, do I take it all back? Do I deny it? Do I crawl under a rock and pretend it's a bad dream? But I didn't, and I told them, and the reaction was not what I expected. My best friend cried, and... As he wept and he hugged me, he said, I'm sorry you've had to go through this on your own. I'm sorry that I couldn't be there to help you, but we can now. We all can. And then I had to tell my coach, and I was genuinely fretful about what was going to happen, about my future, but I needn't be. He said, Keegan, you're a rugby league player, old cock. It don't matter to me if you're gay. A few weeks later, it became front page news. Now, I used to worry about being a bad father, a bad example, a bad man. But now I'm 100 times the father and 100 times the man that I ever was before. So when it came out as, as front page news, I got a phone call from Sir Elton John. Remember the guy who I said I was nothing like? And... I never did get to become a wizard, but I did get to become friends with one. I remember how I used to worry about being fat and ugly. Well, somehow I ended up on the front cover of a magazine, and I even did a bit of modeling too. Um, and as a kid, I worried about being good at rugby. Well, I went on to play the best rugby in my career, Signed for Wakefield, played Super League, did a decent job as well. Remember how I worried about fitting in? Well, I've shared my experience with hundreds of people, with schools, charities, businesses, even set up my own business to help people find their confidence and their place in the world. I've even done a TED Talk. <laughs> and worrying about not speaking to my mum again, well, we're speaking now. We've laughed and cried and apologized and people can and do change. And as I say to my kids, everything is fixable. 
And you might remember that as a kid, I used to worry about finding my place in the world. Well, me and the kids met Anthony and Peter who, who taught us that family has nothing to do with blood. And it's everything to do with unconditional love. And we have it by the boatload. I learned that to, to love and to be loved is to, is to feel the sun on both sides. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be the, the man I am today, standing in front of you talking about this. I used to worry that I wasn't a good man. I used to worry that I wasn't a good father. And I used to worry that I'd never be proud of who I am. But I'm a rugby player, I'm a father, I'm a friend, I'm a gay man, and I'm proud of who and what I am. Now I hope that me wittering on has given you some hope, and you realise that no matter how dark things may seem, there's always some light. No matter how stormy the skies may be, eventually it will blow over. The world is full of light and love and happiness, but sometimes you have to go looking for it. Sometimes it's not where we're told it should be, and sometimes we have to wait for it, but it is there. If you've ever wondered who you are, know that whoever that is, you are loved. Even when you don't feel it, you are loved. Whoever you are, wherever you are. And if you have or ever have felt like you don't belong, know that there's a place that you do. It might not be where you expect it to be. It might not be where people tell you it should be. It might not be an actual place. It might be with friends you haven't met yet, in a place you haven't been yet. It might be a feeling you haven't experienced yet. But it is out there and you will find it. You just got to have hope. 